You're watching City Cable 12, Tacoma's 24-hour municipal information channel. 2024 marks the 40th anniversary of TV Tacoma. Launching in 1984 on Cable Channel 12, TV Tacoma provides transparency for local government through covering meetings, city, and community events. Throughout this year, we'll be bringing you programming highlights from the 1980s, 90s, 2000s, and 2010s. This episode, we look back at one of the earliest TV Tacoma stories about the construction, opening, and first year operation of the Tacoma Dome. Then fast forward to 1994, when the Seattle Supersonics became the Tacoma Supersonics. And finally, we'll have a behind the scenes look at the operations at TV Tacoma that was produced for our 20th anniversary. First up is TV Tacoma's look back at the origin of the Tacoma Dome in the 1980s, complete with the sights and sounds of the era. On April 21st, Tacoma will open the doors to its most remarkable community project of the century, the Tacoma Dome Sports and Convention Center, a uniquely impressive $44 million multi-purpose complex, one of the largest and most versatile in America. After passage of a general obligation bond in March of 1980 by an impressive 70% majority, land was acquired from a warehouse residential district adjacent to Interstate 5 and on the edge of downtown. A local design team, Tacoma Dome Associates, was selected from national competition. Groundbreaking and initial construction began. In their circular dome design, architects McGranahan Messenger's concept carved a bowl from the ground, moving tons of earth to prepare the site. Reinforced concrete sidewalls were then constructed and placed in the dome configuration eventually tied into the wooden lid forming a tension ring. The side walls and 36 concrete support columns solidifying the structure. Sweeping from a height of 155 feet at the top to nearly ground level at the perimeter, the patented Verax dome roof design is effective, efficient, leak-proof, strong, and attractive with its soft to deep blue-hued triangle pattern. The computer-engineered dome is built of glue laminated hemlock and Douglas fir ribs, composed of 288 triangular wood sections braced with horizontal supports. These 5,000 pound sections were assembled on the ground and then hoisted by crane and hand bolted into place using patented steel hubs. It had a skeletal look to it at this time with workers perched atop the connected sections directing the next triangular beam into place. A small army of construction workers then hammered more than 29,000 two-inch tongue-and-groove fir boards over the seven acres of lattice work. The decking was then sealed and insulated with three coats of rubbery urethane forming a tight exterior shell. Between each interior beam section, acoustical insulation was fitted into place, adding a pleasing, audio-efficient, geodesic look to the dome's interior ceiling. Finishing touches are now in progress. The Mason's Cornerstone laying ceremony demonstrated the enthusiasm for this truly public facility. The pure physical appearance of the Tacoma Dome is impressive, but how functional would this facility be? Public Assembly's Facility Director, Mike Grabauer. One of the major concepts that we have in marketing this facility nationwide to our potential users is its tremendous versatility. This building, which is not a covered stadium and not necessarily a covered arena, is in fact the largest arena in the country today with 26,000 plus seats. Uh, this facility and its versatility factor again can provide uh, a, a workable facility for all arena type functions, circuses, ice shows, concerts, and those type of events. By converting our movable seating, which is about approximately 65% of the seating capacity of the house, we are able to convert to a stadium, which allows us the additional versatility of football and soccer and major field events. 
from a functioning standpoint, that allows us maximum utilization of the number of days that we're available for rent, and these facilities are available 365 days a year. The Forgotten Building, a 30,000 square foot exhibition hall attached to the Tacoma Dome itself, offers us even more versatility. 30,000 square feet of space that can do 2,000 for banquet, 4,000 for meetings, and uh, 160 exhibition booths. Tremendous marketing concepts that are now planned to coordinate those two efforts to both serve the public of this area and also our clients that will be using this outstanding complex. Celebration 83 will open the Tacoma Dome, a free four-day event featuring talented performers and exhibits highlighting the people, products, service, and industry of the Pacific Northwest. The Tacoma Dome is a building that is changing the city skyline as well as becoming a symbol of the new attitude in Tacoma, one of growth and pride, a facility that will serve the community and its needs for many years to come, the Tacoma Dome. what makes this attraction so unique. During the mid-1990s, the Seattle Supersonics were one of the hottest teams in the NBA. For the 1994-95 season, they brought the show to Tacoma as Seattle's Coliseum was getting upgraded. A TV Tacoma crew spent some time with the players, finding out how they really feel about playing in the city of destiny. The Sonics have arrived in Tacoma, and from the early season attendance figures, the fans like the team's new home away from home. It's important to us because we get to share the Sonics. We have a lot of Sonics fans here in Tacoma, and we get an opportunity to have them here, and I have to go very far just to see one of their games. We feel more hometown by them being here in Tacoma. Well, it helps business out a lot. And it, I think it puts, gives Tacoma some respect and makes people want to come to Tacoma more. Actually, I kind of like the Sonics here in Tacoma. It's closer for us rather than traveling into Seattle. It's easier access here than for going us. downtown. Uh, I think that it's a very nice place to have it. <laughs> Super Sonics! The Sonics thought so too selecting the Tacoma Dome as the venue for all their home games this season, while the Coliseum at Seattle Center undergoes a renovation. Initially, the idea came as a pleasant surprise to Tacoma leaders. Around December, I received a call from a friend of mine who represents uh, Ackerley Communications in Olympia, and she called and she said, um, who is this, this friend of yours who was just elected mayor? And uh, I said, well, you mean Jack Hyde? And she said, yes. And I said, why are you asking? And she said, well, uh, I would suggest that uh, he call Mr. Barry Ackerley uh, to see about the possibility of the Sonics playing in Tacoma. And, and my reaction was, as probably your reaction would be, how many games? You know, five, six, seven? She said, how about the whole season? And at that point, uh, I said, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> Mayor Jack Hyde made that phone call. Then, after Hyde's death in January, Councilmember Bill Barsma continued the negotiations to bring the Sonics to Tacoma. But it was no slam dunk. Uh, it was difficult. Uh, we, we were able to get enough weekend dates to satisfy the NBA, and uh, we were lucky enough to get 55 dates for them to pick from, and uh, that's what made it happen. Aside from scheduling around the popular Tacoma Rockets Hockey Club, and other conventions, shows, and attractions, the Tacoma Dome needed a little sprucing up. Yeah, to bring us up to NBA standards, we uh, totally renovated our concessions operation. We renovated the locker rooms, both the home and away locker rooms. The basketball court behind me uh, was just renovated. It's our court in Sonics colors, uh, brand new uh, basketball goals, brand new PA system. Uh, the lighting system's been advanced and uh, upgraded, brand new uh, advertising systems were brought down from the Seattle Center, so it's uh, been a huge project. The Sonics' arrival also means huge amounts of money, up to two million for the Tacoma Dome alone, but it means more than money for the city. It's just beyond, uh, beyond comprehension. Uh, the, the, the opportunity for national exposure, we have teams coming in from all over the country, teams and media, we can showcase the community. There's a tremendous economic impact. Uh, all the things that are happening in Tacoma, 
uh, the developments that are occurring we can showcase. Uh, it's just a, a tremendous, tremendous opportunity, a windfall. Maybe the greatest opportunity that uh, the city of Destiny has had to really uh, showcase itself to the, to the entire country. For the Sonics players, the season has not started with the intensity or the record they had planned. And although the Tacoma Dome wasn't designed specifically for basketball, the players think it's just a matter of time before the Tacoma Dome becomes their Tacoma home. It's a little different, you know, it's uh, a little deeper. The, uh, the people are going to be a little further away from the court, but, uh, you know, it shouldn't affect us. The court is okay, the rims are okay. Uh, you know, we just have to get used to the different surroundings, different atmosphere, and. Uh, different locker room, a longer drive and all that, but it should be fine. I don't think uh, we really have a problem with playing in here unless we don't get any people to, to come out and watch us play. But other than that, uh, we should be uh, pretty comfortable playing here. The Sonics won't only be playing in the Dome. They'll be spending a lot of their free time in Tacoma. Do they know what sights to see around town? Tacoma, huh? Hmm. <laughs> Can't really tell you. <laughs> hmm. How about you, Nate? I think uh, we will be looking for, you know, some good restaurants in the downtown area, down on the water, or anywhere close by uh, that we can go and get a good uh, meal after games. With all the focus now on playing in a new city, the question is, can the Sonics bring a championship to Tacoma in 1995? I think if we mentally uh, get ourselves together and uh, concentrate on the things we need to do as far as our game plan, our approach, to each and every game um, starting Saturday, then we have a shot at it. I think we have as good a chance as anybody else in the league. Oh, absolutely. In fact, I expect they will. Huh? I'm with it. It takes a team to create the programming that airs on our station. 20 years ago, the TV Tacoma staff turned the cameras on themselves to provide a behind the scenes look at how our shows are produced. 2004 marks the 20th anniversary of TV Tacoma, and we thought it would be fun to give you a little history of how Channel 12 came about, and to show you what goes on behind the scenes while we're covering special events and putting together our monthly programs. It's a big event in Tacoma. There are crowds of people, city officials, photographers, and another presence, the cameras of TV Tacoma. TV Tacoma is the city's owned and operated municipal television station, which is carried on channel 12 throughout the city of Tacoma. You know, the station with the city council meeting, right? Right. But TV Tacoma goes far beyond that. Currently, TV Tacoma produces over 24 hours of original programming each month. From meetings and talk shows to parades and news magazine shows, TV Tacoma's programming encompasses a variety of formats, and it's all done with a single mission in mind. The staff of TV Tacoma views as our mission to be a resource for the public to turn to get the information about the resources that serve them within the community. We are a connecting point where citizens learn about what's going on in Tacoma and where they can find out how they can benefit from the services of the public nonprofits that exist in our community. The way our team goes about um, fulfilling our mission is to really look at what is the mission and the vision for the city of Tacoma. The vision for the city of Tacoma is to be recognized as a livable and progressive international city regarded for our multicultural richness and our natural setting. What better venue than television to be able to present that to our local public. Our staff then looks at the strategic plan priorities for the city that's been set forth by the city council, public safety, neighborhood enhancement, economic development, and we focus our programming toward those efforts so that we're educating the public about what the city's doing in order to take us forward in those key areas. This mission began in 1985 when then Deputy Mayor Tim Stregge signed the proclamation creating the municipal television station. Strictly a government access channel that is completely operated by city employees, the original vision of the station focused on meeting coverage and special public events. The station then expanded to producing departmental training videos, especially for police and fire. But soon, public demand for more information took that vision even further. 
Uh, there's a demand from the cable viewers. They wanted uh, more local programming, uh, particularly as uh, television stations, formerly in Tacoma, had gravitated to the Seattle marketplace. Uh, Tacoma residents uh, didn't have the amount of local news that they wanted, and they were able to get much more information about city and non-city events uh, through the Tacoma Municipal Television Station. Uh, the constituency has certainly grown over the years. Uh, Nonprofit organizations have always um, requested and been granted by Municipal Cable TV uh, public service announcements, uh, not only on our own Tacoma channel, but for reproduction at other commercial stations around the region. So it's served a variety of interests from local viewers to city departments to uh, providing information uh, to the community. Uh, it's been a, a tremendous asset over the years. TV Tacoma is continuously looking for better ways to serve the community. One way is through strategic partnerships with other government and public agencies. Recent agreements with the Port of Tacoma and Metro Parks has allowed each of these agencies to distribute information and important messages to the public in a timely and effective manner. And in the case of the Port of Tacoma, which produces the Pierce County Port Report with TV Tacoma staff, the benefits of working with the station go beyond disseminating information to the local community. One of our major goals is to keep the citizens in Tacoma and Pierce County informed about the port's activities. A lot of people don't come down to the port or don't live near the water, so they might not see what's really going on down at the port or be aware of the businesses that operate down here and help uh, fuel our international economy. And the port report's been a great way to tell that story. With the port report, we've used segments of it to educate elected officials. We had a group come down. Uh, for a bus tour of the port recently, and while they were riding the bus down from uh, SeaTac Airport, we put in a segment of the, the port report and talked about uh, the Port of Tacoma Overpass Road project and a few other parts of the port. So when they came for the actual tour, they were already prepped, courtesy of the TV Tacoma production. So we, we've used it in a number of ways. With so much going on in the city of Destiny, TV Tacoma's six-person staff is constantly on the move which means each member of the staff is required to perform a variety of functions. From on-camera host, to behind-the-scenes director, to videographer, and editor. It all takes a great deal of coordination and planning, but through it all, one constant remains. The goal to accomplish its mission with quality programming. Dynamic writing, videography, and editing are all part of the high production values the staff at TV Tacoma incorporates into their programs. Not only has this approach been successful in giving the station a high number of viewers in the community, but also over the years, it has allowed the station to receive a number of awards. You know, TV Tacoma recently received our 100th award for programming, and while I think that speaks very well for the quality and the caliber of the staff that we have here, I think each of the staff members who work for the City of Tacoma would tell you that those awards are possible because there are so many great things that are happening in this community. There are endless amounts of great stories to tell about people, places, activities, construction, development, um, the rebirth of a city. And so it's an honor for us to be a part of all of that in serving the community. Tacoma has a bright future ahead. And as the city and its people go forth into that future, TV Tacoma will be there to help tell their story. Thank you for joining us for the premiere episode of Destiny City Rewind. We look forward to sharing more stories and behind the scenes look at TV Tacoma Channel 12 as we celebrate 40 years of providing informative, entertaining, and illuminating coverage to the citizens of our great city. Watch us, watch Tacoma.